Welcome to the Marshall News and View Show. I'm Elaine Conyers, and my guest today is uh, Tom Bolin, who is the Executive Director of the Area YMCA. It's been a while since, since you've been on, and, and we gotta we gotta have you more often to so you can share with the, with our viewing public about the programs you have for for each season of the year, right? Yeah, we. We change, uh, there's a few things stay the same, but the why is kind of an ever-changing organization. We change sure. seasonally and sometimes daily. Daily, wow, mm -hmm. that's great. So what's going on right now in our fall season, right? Or are we already in winter? We're in winter. They actually <laughs> okay. they actually okay. <laughs> pieced together a winter brochure for me. It's not out to the public yet, and so okay. some of it's news to me that uh, <laughs> things that we're doing in the next six <laughs> months or so, and this runs us through May. And, and right now we're really in fall season and, and working on, you know, the, those programs are, sure. In, a, in operation right now, but I this week, the big thing going on for me this week, and it, it might be after this airs even, but uh, tomorrow, the 17th of November, is Give to the Max Day, and so it's a, oh. it's a big um, statewide event. There's a, a group called Give Minnesota, and they put on a number of things, but the big event is called Give to the Max, so it's a chance for the whole state to come together to support the nonprofits oh, great. in the state. And then you go on to a, the Give Minnesota website, and there's a Give to the Max website, and make online donations and support agencies. So we're really lucky in Marshall this year that uh, it's been very big in the metro for, for a number of years, okay. but out state, not so much. Yeah. They decided to, to take their show on the road this year, and they're actually kicking off uh, the Give Max Give to the Max Day in Marshall uh -huh. at the Bear, Red Bear Arena at midnight. So we have a midnight to 1 a.m. slot. So we're going to have about, <laughs> hopefully about 75, 100 uh, folks from Marshall out to the oh. Red Baron. Wow. Playing games on the ice, uh, raising some money, having fun, building relationships. And then we're going to take that and maximize it the next day. There'll be some, some media coverage of that event at night. Oh. And then the next day we'll, we'll kick off at 2 p.m. at the YMCA, and from 2 to 7, we have a program called uh, Campus Community Connect. Uh, a VISTA volunteer that we share between the university and the Y is actually planning that event. We have about 50 uh, some vendors coming uh, from haircuts to dental care to resources for housing, for education, for all kinds of different things. So it's open to the public, free. They can come wow. over and meet with, with anybody they'd like to. Uh, and learn what resources and information and, and help is available in the community. You can get a free haircut. Uh, we're going to have snacks. We're going to have a meal, loaves and fishes. Uh, oh, Esther's wow. Kitchen is actually providing a meal oh, the whole day. Sure. So that's going to run 2 to 7. And we thought that wasn't a big enough day yet. So we, uh, we decided to throw a business after hours event <laughs> into that. And so uh, Brad grew hot with the chamber. And, yes. and our whole committee is working on that. So at 4:30, the business community is invited to come over. Okay. And kind of the same thing. Have a have a meal, and uh, but really a chance to to meet all the nonprofits that are in the community, mm -hmm. and uh, learn what services they're doing, and, and learn how they can maybe help out. It might be volunteering. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have businesses that have staff that have volunteer hours oh. and could do things and 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 help with projects. It might be giving financially, um, but it's a First time event, hopefully an, an annual event we're gonna put on. Good, good. But, but really big, really to raise awareness and maybe some dollars around all the good that the nonprofits do yes, in the community. Yeah. Oh, that's just fabulous. That's just fabulous. And, and I'm sure that uh, <clears throat> our, our viewers will wanna go out. And, and if they don't get there this year, it will be next year also. I think right? it's the same, uh, <laughs> I think it's the third Thursday of There's, November every year. And, uh, yes. and we're gonna, it, it's really, really growing. We started out with 20 some vendors, and all of a sudden this last week, it just grows every day so by wow. tomorrow we might be over 60 we actually the wire ran out of tables and chairs so sure. we are now bringing in things from other agencies uh -huh. uh, just to make it happen yeah oh that is just tremendous we are so fortunate too to, that we have that facility out there because it's bringing a lot of um, uh, events into our community and bringing a lot of uh, visitors too besides you know the people that are in Marshall we want them to participate but also around the area exactly so that is just great. Mm -hmm. So as you say, we're in the fall season as far as as um, as enrollment and uh, for different uh, um, age groups, right? Yeah, all kinds of different programs from basketball yeah. and, and youth soccer and all those oh, programs yeah. are going on. Our normal fitness classes are are happening, and um, you know they're predicting a. a you know, a half a foot of snow or so tomorrow, a little uh -oh. blizzard. So uh, for the YMCA, as the director of the Y, that means a, a busy day. Yes. Uh, and, and things really pick up when the weather gets cold. And so 
we uh, we're we're winding up. All our program directors are busy planning what they're doing for the next six months and, yes. and looking at those programs. Yeah, does that start that uh, winter season has already started or will start? Well, uh, program wise, most of that starts right after January. Registration, uh, the, okay. the brochures will go out in the, to the public and on our website in uh, early December. Okay, people can start mm -hmm. registering for some lessons and all the different programs. And then usually those programs actually start in, in January and, and run through the, the springtime, sure. um, usually through April or, or through May. So, um, you know, right now, what is, uh, it's, it's budget season at the Y. That's it's always fun. We're working on a new website. We just had a meeting this morning. Uh, it's mm -hmm. uh, kind of what sometimes isn't known is there's 20, um, 22 Ys in Minnesota outstate. Oh, really? And then there's another 20 or so in the metro oh, that are all sure. part of the YMCA of the yeah. greater Twin Cities. And so we work together a lot. So I think that locally here we're seen as the Marshall Area YMCA, and yes. that's our Y, downtown Marshall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in reality, we, we work a lot collaboratively. Lovely, sure. And so right now uh, we're in the need of a, a new website and keeping up with technology. So this sure. morning we had a meeting with uh, the Wilmer YMCA and the Worthington YMCA, and we're working together for a, for a brand new website, okay. and we'll hopefully kick that off uh, <clears throat> oh, probably early next year, but looking at, at different ways we can serve our members, make things sure. more uh, uh, more responsive, more technology changes a lot sure. all the time, oh, yes. so we're, <laughs> we're, we're trying to get those things in place. And, and so that's one of our, our big projects right now. Um, another thing that's been really fun to watch, we... Um, We've always had fitness equipment, so part of the mission of the Y is is the fitness side of things, yes. and then there's a, a social service side, and mm -hmm. and and our our <clears throat> cause is really to strengthen the the community, and it, it could be done through a program, but it's it's also done many other ways, and sure. through scholarships and and things like that, and and so it's been fun to watch equipment. I've been with the Y about 15 years now, and equipment, cardio equipment used to be cardio equipment. I used to get on it to to actually exercise. Uh -huh. uh, that point is still there, but now it's kind of a standalone media platform. And so the equipment at the Y, it's hook, hooked up to Wi-Fi. You can watch television oh, and television yeah. series and videos. And <laughs> you can go on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. You can see their weather radar. Sure. <laughs> uh, you can go to, there's videos, and you go to New Zealand and France and all over the, the country, and, and they've taken videos in those countries doing those things. And so it's fun, it's been really fun to watch the interaction with members with that equipment where uh, what I see is people used to come and say, I'm going to work out for 20 minutes, and they would get on that piece of equipment. When it hit 20 minutes, they were done. Now they work out to the end of a TV show oh, or to, a, sure. to an end of uh, something else that they're doing. And, yes, yeah. and now there's, there's apps that go with the equipment. So we have a, uh, a smartphone app, and it works on the computer, too, where people can track all their workouts. They can set oh, goals. Great. They can communicate kind of like with like Facebook to other members. Yeah. Uh, we can send them messages. So all those things have changed. And now we even went to a system called uh, Fitness on Demand. And so we have a, a video system in the aerobics room with a projector and a screen that comes down. And so we have about 55 fitness classes uh, a week that are um, just available to all our members and, and really guests from the community that come in also uh, for the day. And those are all led by certified instructors. They're awesome classes. We're going to wow. keep all 55. But the Y is open about 105 hours a week, and so we have about half the time that yeah. we don't have any classes going yeah. on. So we went to a, a digital system that we installed, and so now we have a little kiosk, touch screen, and you can pick cardio or strength or whatever you'd want. You can pick easy or medium or difficult. You can pick the time frame, and it will show you all your, uh, all your options. And you click the one you want, you hit start, and a video will start in this room. The screen will come down, the projector comes on, and you can take class from so, another instructor. Yeah, sure. Wow. And then most of those videos have three instructors up front, and so you can follow the, the lead instructor in the front, and they're doing the, the hardest workout, and then the person on the other side is doing a little bit modified, and another person's doing a, a different level. Okay. And so our members can look at all the different levels and, and kind of do what they want. Even, uh, well, even with snow coming tomorrow, if, if we do have snow and, uh, and classes are canceled, now we can just turn on a machine and we have digital instructors uh -oh, there to, sure. to, uh, to run classes for yeah, us. So yeah. that's kind of been uh, exciting things this year we're looking at. Um, well, that is, that is amazing. That's a lot of stuff. Now, with all this technology, uh, uh, visitors say, for instance, I come over there, uh, I'm very bad at uh, figuring out technology. Are there people around that, that you can ask for instruction and help? Yeah, staff, we're always there to help you out. <laughs> and uh, 
And actually, we're, we're filming out here at SMSU. It's, it's, we have such a great collaboration with SMSU. Okay. As a YMCA, as a nonprofit, I don't know where we would be without. Okay. But yeah. So a lot of our employees, probably about 60 to 70 percent, are actually college students. And uh, the exercise science uh, major out here at the university has a lot of our employees come sure. through that program. Yeah. So they're up on the latest technology sure, and they're that course. age group that know how to work those <laughs> things and know how to work the equipment. And yeah. uh, we have a really good relationship with, uh, with the university for a number of things that we do that, that make it possible. Yeah, even well, that's on, wonderful. Even on the volunteer oh. side, uh, oh, for this event uh, that's coming up, we just need, we need a lot of volunteers for a lot of things oh, sure. we do. Awful lot of times those volunteers are coming from the university oh, sure. and their students. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I think that we're very fortunate that living out here in uh, <clears throat> rural Minnesota, the students, like you say, are always so willing to step up and help. It is. It, it's, a, <clears throat> it's a great benefit to, yeah. to a community this size. Yes, that's for sure. So, uh, well, with that uh, said, then, uh, uh, are there any special uh, things that you're adding uh, for the winter session then? Yeah, you know, a lot of the, the same programs we've always oh, done sure. from swim yeah. lessons to basketball to soccer, uh, programs like that. But we do have a, a, a few new ones or maybe some that aren't so well known. So on the on the fitness side, we're delving into some, some dancing. We're going to try oh, traditional yeah. square dancing. And we're going to see uh, who will show up for that and sure. some of those age groups. We also have some swing dancing going on. So that's the first time oh. we've really uh, gotten into that as a as an exercise program right. that you can yeah. dance for, for health. Yeah. Um, I think the other p programs that not really changing a lot, but that are just really, really successful and there's a great need in the community are, are some of the senior programs. And so we have traditional yoga, but we also have chair yoga. Okay. And so people will come and chairs are out. We have, oh, I think the other day we had 44 people in the one class. And they come and, and they're doing yoga, but they're not on the floor getting okay. up and down. Yeah. They're balancing on chairs or using some other tools that we, we have to do that. We also have a class called Fitness Over 50. And so okay. there's a number of classes geared towards that specific age group. Yeah. And that they continue to be popular and, and even more so as, as that baby boomer generation ages and, and there's yeah. more people. And, um, you know, when we talk about programming and looking to the future, a lot of it's around that age that group. Age and, group. And, yeah. and having the equipment and having the classes and the mm -hmm. training to, to work with them. Well, that's wonderful because, uh, as we know, that uh, that population is really, really growing and that uh, their people are living longer. And especially, yeah. you say, like you say, that uh, baby boomer generation, we're seeing a big, big uh, growth uh, yeah. as far as aging is concerned. And, yeah. and uh, everywhere we we look, there's there's organizations that say, well, we will offer this to yeah. uh, seniors and so on. Yeah, and uh, so that's so good because, um, uh, you know, it's uh, I'm sure it's tough to just sit around and look at the birds or <laughs> the squirrels or something. Yeah. You can actually yeah. get out and there's organizations out there like the Y that's going to uh, be very uh, helpful with exercise and, and socialization and all of that. Yeah, that's they, great. They talk a lot about the 70 being the new, the new uh, or the new 50 where what years ago what people at 50 were doing, people at 70 are doing now. And, yeah. and so, yeah. and, and, the, and the programs are out there and, and really with insurance companies, there's programs called Silver and Fit, and there's a whole bunch of different programs that will provide free memberships and free classes okay. and things through through insurance. So the, the whole country is really seeing that, um, the benefit of, of that health, if, if you mm -hmm. can stay healthy through those ages, uh, the quality of life goes up so much. And so, you know, it's not just WISE and other fitness facilities, but it's insurance companies sure. and yeah. healthcare facilities and yeah. things like that looking. Well, that's great. And then, of course, you always have have things for the uh, youth. And um, uh, I suppose you have a lot of uh, students, uh, grade school, middle school, high school, that come come after they're done at school for the day, right? We do. We have uh, we actually have an after school program that's um, a plan program staffed, and and the bus brings some of the kids. We have a, a little bus that we pick up kids from other oh, facilities. Okay. We have about, oh, I want to say 70 kids every week or so. They come to after school program and okay. they're doing arts and crafts. And, uh, a lot. It's very structured. So a lot of homework help. They're getting their homework oh, done. So God. when they get home to mom and dad, 
homework's already done, they're yeah. taking time to read. We have mandatory reading periods where we have all kinds of books, and it's either their schoolwork book or another oh, book. Sure. Uh, and then we have some fun. We swim once a week, and, and uh, they do other activities, mm -hmm. and have a lot of fun in after school. And then beyond those kids, they get a little bit older, it's more of a drop-in. And so those kids come, we're next to the middle school, They we have a lot of kids uh, coming, and they just want to do their own thing. They don't want to structure it so much. Oh, okay. <laughs> so they're, they're playing in the gym, they're tossing the football, playing basketball, playing ping pong hanging out. Sometimes they're even doing their homework in the lobby, <laughs> yeah. uh, but they, they kind of make up their own uh, own activities. And, and you know, with the new library over there, there's a there's a well-worn trail between the library and the Y, and they, oh, they go back and forth and, yeah. and, uh, and use both facilities sure. really heavily. Sure. It's nice to see. I think for the, the little kids, it's a, not a real new program, but maybe uh, six months or so, we've been doing a program called Kids in Canvas. Uh, we happened to had a new staff member who's very artistic. Oh yeah. And so she decides on the on the painting they're going to do every month, and so she'll, she'll do a, a sample. We'll put that up in the lobby. It's something you know fairly simple. Uh huh. And the kids will sign up, and they come with a parent, either mom or dad, and they all do the exact same drawing. Oh, okay. And they go step by step. She explains we're going to do this color, and this is how you start, and then you move on to this, and then they take pictures of all those. Oh. And it's amazing how well. I mean, they're young kids a lot of times yeah. that are doing this, yeah. and by following the instruction of the of that yeah. person, the, the pictures are excellent. They, yeah. they turn out so well, and they look a lot, you know, they, they look a lot like her original one. Sure. And, and so uh, this one is a this month is a turkey that they're oh. they're doing, of course, with Thanksgiving <laughs> coming up. And but every month we do that once a month, and we'll put put that picture out ahead so they see what it is. Sure. And, uh, that's been a it's been a fun program, a little different than we've that's, done in the that's past. That's great. Uh, now, I have to ask you this. Uh, <clears throat> are you open seven days a week, five, six days? We are, no, we're open seven days a week. Uh, we open at 5, 15 in the morning, Monday through Friday, so we're up nice and early wow. and we close yeah. at 10. Weekends are a little bit different uh, hours. Or, we're shorter hours and close a little bit early. We're actually... Um, we have a, a program called futsal, which not many people have heard of futsal, but basically indoor soccer. Oh, okay. And um, and they play six on six, and it's just it's a soccer game, but it's indoor with a they call it a futsal ball. It's sure. a lower balance, less dynamic. It's, it doesn't yeah. go as far or go as fast, and uh, that's been going on for years. Um, but it started out with four, five, six teams, small group playing kind of on Sunday evenings. And that's just blossom with the, oh. especially the immigrant populations we've yeah. had come to Marshall. Yeah. There, yeah. There's a huge need, and and it's just going wonderfully. And so right now we have 12 teams signed up. Wow. We had to turn some teams away. We just didn't have enough uh, yeah. enough gym space, enough hours to do that. It's a huge spectator sport, so you have the players come, but they bring yes. their families, families and kids, and so it's been a really positive thing. And it's grown so much. We we start kind of looking at. We get a little crowded at certain times, so how are we going to work around that? And so here in a few weeks, we're going to start switching, and we're going to do all those games during off hours. So we're going to start doing them on Saturday. When we when we oh, close the sure. Y, we'll close. We'll kind of everybody go out, and then we'll reopen the doors, and we'll have just futsal come in to play. Oh, okay. And they, uh, you know, the rest of the Y won't be open, swimming, machines, anything. Just the gym will be open. And we have uh, volunteer referees that come and do it. And we have a staff person, a couple of staff people actually stay and, and, uh, and help out with any logistics and, and make sure everything's going well uh, during that time. And then, so about four games will happen every Saturday night. And so they'll play about 6.30, probably to 10.30 at night. And then they'll come back on Sunday morning and right now probably 9 to 11. Unless we had some more teams, we could, we could actually increase that time a little bit. And so they come, they have uh, their teams. There's an SMSU team, I know. There's, okay. there's teams from all different cultures sure. in the community. And they have a great time playing, and, and we have a league season, and then there's playoffs, and yeah. give some trophies and, cool. and medals to the winners, and it's just hugely Huge. popular. Yeah. I'm looking, uh, there's captains for each team, so we're having a captains meeting on Friday, and we're going to float the idea of having a, a potluck, and that's probably the thing I look to the, the most of, of all these different cultures, and trying to, uh, a lot of times they... They don't necessarily know each other. Sometimes we don't even speak the same language. Right. And so the games are, are really interesting sometimes, the communication part. But the thing that everybody knows is, is soccer. The game is soccer. Mm -hmm. And they know sure. the rules. Yeah. And, and that works perfectly. Sure. Uh, some of the rest is it can be a little bit tougher at times. And so we're going to try to do a start the next uh, kickoff season. Uh, we, we run different you know, for like six, eight weeks, and then we, yeah. we do another one. Uh, we're going to try to have a potluck and try to have food from around the world and, 
and try to get everybody to know each other a little bit better yeah. and have some staff and board members come over. So looking forward to that. And it's just, of all the programs, we have so many people there that it's just a fun one to see the mixing yeah. pot of people and how all this happens and, and how the communication happens. And mm. it's just really yeah. interesting. Where they fit, if they really begin to fit in to the, uh, to the area and fit in with uh, the kids that have always been yep. here. I think yeah. that's just fantastic. And, and the communication side, and I, yeah. I don't know if you even know this, but my wife and I were Peace Corps volunteers years ago. Oh. Uh, after college, we, we joined the Peace Corps and oh. we lived in the Dominican Republic down in the same island as Haiti, down in the Caribbean for, yeah. for two years uh, in a little village. And so we both speak Spanish, and but we've, we've had that situation where we're in a, a rural village and having three months of Spanish to our name sure. and having to communicate and the, and the difficulties and how that happens. And so yeah. I really appreciate futsal at yes. the Y and, yes. and how there's so many different levels and languages and how that all works mm -hmm. and people work together to get that it done. That is fantastic. I have to share a little story myself uh, in connection with the Y. I was on the first board of directors mm -hmm. and so we were looking uh, at the different programs that we should start and then also uh, that we looked at how we could bring in uh, uh, especially kids from uh, uh, the immigrants, new mm -hmm. immigrants yep. to the community and so we came up well let's just offer soccer because those kids really like soccer it wasn't a big thing here you know yeah. and, and uh, so that that started and guess what all the uh, white kids came yeah <laughs> and it took a little while to pull in the new immigrants but we yep. just got that was so uh, we got such a kick out of that even though you know the local Kids did not really know much about soccer boy. Yeah. They really moved in and they wanted it. And, yeah, and, and so it's just um, it's just wonderful. And like you say, this is a good way of intermingling with the cultures and, and especially when they're young, that they, they that's easier for them to do it that yeah. when they're younger. So yeah, I that's think what's, great. what's really neat about the Y, and I, I talk about this every time I, I come out and visit with you, but um, what isn't well known, I don't think, anywhere in the nation and, and in Marshall is that. We're a nonprofit organization. I, I, I receive that a lot that we're part of the city or part of the yeah, county or yeah. something like that. But we're a private nonprofit organization uh, headquartered in uh, Chicago. There's 2,800 oh. Ys around the nation. It's serving over 20, I think it's 22.5 million people, oh. uh, billions of dollars. We're just, we're just a huge international organization. Yeah. So, kind of in my world, I'm working on local, what are we going to do here? How are we going to do this with the building? Or how are we going to pay that bill? Whatever yeah. it might be. But then on the other side, I'm dealing with things that are great big, huge projects and initiatives that are coming down, working through the Centers for Disease Control, working with the White House, uh, major organizations yeah. uh, that are, are bringing these programs. And, and so that's, it's a... It's a fantastic thing. Yeah, and it's not well known, and, and so yeah. And so then the other question is, what makes us a nonprofit? Well, how are we different than any other fitness facility? And it, and it gets back to scholarships and, and living our mission, and so that's what, uh -huh. uh, and we do that really well in Marshall. We, my board and other campaigners in the community, uh, raise about one hundred fifteen thousand dollars a year. We're up in that. Our goal next wow. year is about one hundred twenty one thousand, and that comes through individuals giving money, corporations, foundations. There's some grants involved. United Way is a, mm -hmm. a large contributor, and and all that money gets turned around to provide scholarships for, for people that need a little bit of help to be at the Y. Okay. So our real mission is to make sure everybody that wants to be involved can be involved, yes. and um, you, you'd be surprised who that is. I. I I'm always amazed that uh, we have about 2,000 some people that receive scholarships, and sometimes it's seniors on fixed incomes, sometimes oh, it's yeah. single parent moms, sometimes it's somebody that's uh, had a real high level job for years and then there was an accident or an illness in the family and, and situations have changed. Oh, yeah. um, but it's just really, really uh, interesting how that program works and, yeah. and, and how the community supports it. But that's what's really, really, uh, it, it, what makes, it makes the Y a nonprofit and I think that's for a lot of the staff. That's the great part of yeah. working there, and for the board, it's a great part of volunteering there. Is how it it helps the community. That's for sure. Well, and um, uh, we've had the Y here how many years now? I say about fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. yeah. And you started with. Uh, here, I mean, you were the first director, right? No, I'm the third. Oh, third. Teresa, oh. Teresa Lepke was the first director who built the Y. 
And then Tim Olson was here for some years. He's up in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota now. And okay. I've been here about four and a half years. Oh, okay. I, yep. I uh, know that uh, but yep. as you get older, you lose some <laughs> of your memory, and I forgot that part. <laughs> yep. Yeah, for me, I grew up in Tracy. So for me, oh, it's, sure. it's coming it's back to coming southwest back. Minnesota and, and family here. And, and it's a great place to live and raise a family. And yeah. so that's kind of what brought me back to, uh, sure. to the Marshall area. But that, yeah, that is great. So... Um, well, this has been really, really interesting, and um, and uh, certainly getting back to this event that's going to take uh, uh, take place on the seventeenth, yep. right? Seventeenth and eighteenth. Uh, uh, no. Starting at midnight tonight. Oh, midnight uh, on, yeah. on the seventeenth, and okay. uh, and then running through seven p.m. Yeah, that's going to be just fantastic, and and. Um, uh, I'm sure you like the idea that we have that um, arena out there, but of course you've got so much at the Y as far as as meeting rooms and and uh, open space too. That's been one of the main um, uh, places in Marshall for people to gather. But now we're uh, gathering even larger groups. Yeah, it's it's a you know I think it's a perfect size community to, to work together where you know leaders are at the same meetings an awful yes. lot. We're talking all the time. Yeah. Uh, I know I have peers in large cities that to get a meeting with the superintendent or, or somebody in the community is a yeah. week-long process to even be able to talk to somebody. That's right. Uh, superintendent Munson's on my board, and we, sure. you know, we have those connections, and we can talk anytime. Yeah. And so the, the arena is an awesome addition to the right. community. It's, you know, I was on the, uh, the board at some of the planning with that. About and that, so sure. They're very... Uh, uh, very upfront about talking and not duplicating how each organization, exactly. what our niches are, and how we can work together. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it, it's it's a boon to, to everybody. And, and what we end up really doing is we end up working together and, and having, yeah. you know, like, well, the one, the midnight event is at the Red Baron Arena, but the 2 to 7 p.m. is actually at the Y tomorrow. It is, okay. And, and so we're very good about working yeah. together and, and collaborating. I often talk about uh, how uh, in Marshall we have this, the uh, school, the, the Y, the um, um, uh, chamber, and our EDA all working together, collaborating and planning together. It, it's, it's a fantastic thing. And like you say, you don't have to wait a week or two to meet because it, it, can, come to, it can come together very, very soon. And yep. people really have the initiative to go forward to build the area and the uh, offerings for, for our citizens and for the whole area. Yeah, we, we all benefit. And, yeah. uh, it, it's amazing with the Y. It's, it's almost weekly that I have the different businesses in town are, are attracting new uh, employees and they're bringing them in from all around the, sure. the nation and really the world. And the Y is one of those things with the schools and other organizations that, that attract that. And so mm -hmm. we all work together, and, and right. they bring those folks by the Y, and we tour and show them mm -hmm. what, the, what the Marshall can offer them as, as residents. And it, it pays off it sure in does. so many different ways. So. Yes. Well, this has been very interesting. I really appreciate your, your coming, and we got to get you back here sooner next time. Okay. We'll do that. And we're all yeah. uh, good luck now with this new event. And... Uh, and uh, we'll be talking about that again. So awesome. thank you again yeah, for coming and all me your again. work. Thank you. <laughs>